Tim Knapp, uh, race engineer for Santi. I'm responsible for all the performance of the race car, so everything that makes it go fast. If it's not good, it's definitely on me or him. So he'll blame me and I'll blame him. Australia, uh, racing. So I went to university and then in Australia and then I got a job at Penske Shocks as a shock designer or a junior draftsman, shock designer and that's how I ended up in America. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I was a really good athlete, like I was a big swimmer. And then uh, I went to actually university on a track scholarship. So I've always been very competitive and then, you know, followed racing and then I'm like, okay, um, yeah, I want to be a race engineer. And so I went to school as an engineer. Um, not a lot, really. I've only worked for Penske and then I, um, from there I went to a champ car team called Pac West and I was a shock designer who then became a race engineer for Mark Blundell and then from there um, I went to Sam Schmidt Motorsports and actually became a co-owner with Sam on the team in Indy Lights and for the last what it would be 12 years you know I'd done Indy Lights with Sam so as a co-owner and was chief engineer there responsible for all the performance of all the cars. So sometimes we ran like four cars in Indy Lights there. Um, I'm trying to think, how do I? Not easily, yeah. yeah. All over the world. So I race all over the world. Um, <clears throat> like jet ski racing is probably bigger in Europe now than it is in America. Um, and uh, yeah, so I race all over the world. Like next month I'm gonna race in Italy. I uh, just got back from racing in Thailand in December. Yeah, so I've got to see the world racing jet skis. I think it does actually because a little bit like the way I look at the driver, I look at it from an engineering point of view a little bit differently because as an athlete that's paid to race jet skis, I can see, you know, sometimes you have good days, sometimes you have bad days, but a lot of like what I do is psychology, you know, and I, I sometimes think I've got the wrong degree. I should have had a psychology degree instead of an engineering degree. So, um, but I look at it a little bit differently as an athlete that competes as well, you know. I would do your job <laughs> because I've known you for a long time and you're a good guy. No, I was going to be an architect. I wanted to be an architect. Yeah. Spend time with my daughter. She's 10 years old. Yeah, and she's a big swimmer, so I spend a lot of time with her. Yeah. Not with my wife, though. I don't spend any time with my wife. I guess, you know, going to engineering is, you know, getting an engineering degree is a big help. And I think a lot of it is, you know, I was lucky that I got a lot of good breaks and, and, and actually worked under some really smart people and I learned a lot from them. Um, and back when I got into racing, it wasn't so much spec racing. You know, you could do, there was a lot more design involved. Unfortunately, now I see a lot of the young guys come out of college and they don't experience a lot of that design process, like, you know, redesigning the rockers or suspension or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, how do you get into my job? It's hard, you know, it's hard. You've got to get the break and then, you know, you're going to get thrown in the deep end. So you're either going to sink or you're going to swim, you know, and if you're good, you're going to swim, you know, and you'll, you'll, make, you'll make it good. I'm not saying that I swim though, <laughs> you know, this weekend I'm drowning. <laughs> yeah, there was a, there was a hydraulic system that I designed that under braking it would keep the car a lot flatter um, and uh, I can't take full credit for it because uh, a designer at Reynard, Malcolm Osler, he and I were at Milwaukee at a test and we had this idea and so I went away and ran with the idea and designed this system, yeah, and uh, yeah, it, was pretty, it was a pretty revolutionary system. It was uh, interlinked hydraulically from the front to the rear 
So when the rear, when the front went down, the rear would stay down, um, and it worked really good too. But unfortunately, all that got banned. You know, now you can't interlink the shocks together and all of that, which goes a little bit back to what I was saying about, you know, it's bad for the new engineers don't get to experience a lot of that. Oh my gosh, what a... <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd like them to think... Uh, you, you, I don't know. I'd like him to think I was a, a good guy for an Australian that was half decent at what he did. Yeah. yeah.